As part of a unique EU project, researchers all over Europe are now working on developing a technique that will make it possible for several cars to form a convoy in a road train, where the vehicles wirelessly communicate with each other and are manually steered by a professionally trained driver in a lead truck. The aim of all this research is to make traffic of the future safer, at the same time that fuel consumption and environmental effects are considerably reduced. An additional bonus will be an improved traffic flow, as road capacity will increase when cars are driven closer together. As a driver inside the road train, it will be quite possible to read the newspaper, watch TV, make phone calls or even eat breakfast on the way to work at 90 km an hour, without having to hold on to the steering wheel. The car drives itself. We're looking at getting platoons onto the public highways. That's a sort of core mission statement, if you like. We won't necessarily achieve it in this sort of time frame of this project, but that's an aspiration. We're looking at understanding the challenges that um, are relevant and, and appropriate to getting those platoons working on public highways. We want to develop the technologies that have those platoons working together, uh, having vehicles cooperating using vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications um, with a lead vehicle that is a, a professional driver who's been trained to lead the platoon. We believe that platooning can be safer than normal driving uh, today. However, the technology has to be such that it doesn't cause more problems than it solves. So we're trying to understand what can go wrong with the concept of platooning. And that may be things like the platoon is, uh, uh, the first car in the platoon is about to have an accident. What would, it, would be the consequences of the following cars and how can we solve it and address all these issues? There are many practical problems that must be solved before the road train can become a reality. And this is not just a question of new technology. New laws and rules will be required to regulate how road train traffic shall be accomplished and applied in purely practical terms. It is also a question of whether the seven companies that are now collaborating in safe road trains for the environment can find reasonable solutions that function and that can be accepted throughout the whole of Europe. Or in the, as you say, in the initial phases of the project, we are considering everything that could be uh, hazardous, everything that could happen, anything. The aim of the project is to uh, drive very close to the, to, 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 to the vehicle in front to, 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 save, uh, to save on fuel. Here at Tecnalia in Bilbao, in the north of Spain, they are already testing the new technology in an advanced road train simulator. Amongst other things, the aim of these tests is to find out how drivers experience being so close to another car travelling at 90 km an hour without actually driving themselves. We are learning how humans, how people react when they drive in such close situation when they are driving very close to the vehicle in front or when how they feel when driving in such platoon systems. There are some reactions that are different as we had expected. There are lots of people trusting completely the system and they think they will use it in the in future and other people they do not trust at all and they have to be convinced of that of the working of the system. And even the researchers here in Bilbao admit that it feels a bit unusual to sit and read the newspaper on the motorway and not have full control of the car themselves. Well, um, I, now I know so feel, I feel quite um, nervous, but uh, for me it's uh, really good because I never have enough time to read the newspaper. But <laughs> you, you feel safe? It. Yeah, but I prefer to look at a road and not read the newspaper, but yeah, I feel safe, of course. Later this year, they hope to be able to start real tests between a lead truck and one following car. At Volvo Cars in Gothenburg, the new sensor and advanced steering systems have already been installed and tested with extremely promising results. Right now we're building up the first prototype vehicle for a platoon. And as compared to a production vehicle, something which is really new is that we have to steer the vehicle automatically. So the vehicle has to automatically follow the car which is in front. And what you can see here is that we are 
detecting an object in front of our vehicle and that the steering system is automatically steering in the right direction so that we can steer automatically. Communicating wirelessly is, is a difficult subject and uh, depending on the environment we're in, uh, if we're on the road for example or if we're in a tunnel or if we're in a city, uh, the characterization of the performance is going to be completely different. And it's, it's, so, so we start with this very simple environment which is a, a shielded uh, shielded room like this and uh, then we make measurements, other measurements uh, later on and get the uh, characterization of the system and, and, and then, then of course we design the control system for the platoon. Safety is of course one of the most important aspects of this project which is why very stringent demands will be made of the lead vehicle and its driver. The lead vehicle driver should be a professional with additional training for leading other vehicles in a platoon. The driver will be supported by existing safety technology such as AlcoLock, driver alert support and electronic stability systems that support driver attention and minimize accidents. In addition, Volvo Technology is now working with the development and installation of different types of aids that will further increase traffic safety. So we have a, a video camera here mounted in the dash which is looking at the driver's face <clears throat> and we also have infrared lights in there to provide even illumination across different external lighting conditions. Uh, then we have a computer which is processing the images um, <clears throat> and trying to track your face, it tries to measure the orientation of your, of your head. For example, we have a driver monitoring system from another European project called Habit which detects if the driver get distracted from traffic. Uh, based on these driving support systems, we help the driver to lead the platoon in a safe way through the traffic. But researchers also believe that it will take a long time for motorists to accept and really trust that this new technology is really safe. You, you need to, to rely on a system your life is in the hands of the system, you know, in your, your own hands. So, from my point of view, I think that we need a lot of time to, to educate or to train the people and, and, uh, that, uh, and to, to, um, to find a, that they uh, accept the, this kind of systems. Even if researchers already know that it is completely possible for cars to communicate wirelessly with each other in this way, they are also very aware that it will take at least another 10 years, probably much longer, before the rolling road trains become a reality. I think there's an enormous potential in this project. I think um, the concept of platooning in one form will appear in, in several years from now, but already in shorter term I think we will see spin-off effects where we can have cars drive autonomously, for example in low speeds in traffic jams where the car can autonomously follow the car in front of you.